it's Bobby and welcome to Lions, Tigers and Bears. We are super happy to have you here today. Saturday at 1030, so it's our last uh, Facebook Live until next week, Wednesday. And today we're gonna get to introduce you to Hank. First, I wanna just tell the newcomers a little bit about what we do here at Lions, Tigers and Bears. We rescue animals, especially lions, tigers and bears, provide a lifetime home. We're an education center. We work all over the country, have done some international work, and we are the voice for the animals. So it's our job to be their voice and to, once we bring them here to our sanctuary, let, let them live out their life in um, dignity. And to get through these hard times, we have launched a campaign. We're calling it Help Us Hang In There. Super easy to get to our campaign. You can go to our website, www.lionstigersandbears.org. We are the Lions, Tigers, and Bears. It's in Alpine, California. We're east of San Diego. Or even easier, you could just text 71777 and text LTB to 71777. And it is a $20 challenge where we're asking you to donate $20 or more, which helps us to provide an awesome home for these animals. Medical care helps us to rescue animals. But for right now, it's helping us to hang in there through this whole pandemic that we're all going through. So first off today, we are gonna introduce you to Hank. I think you just got a sneak peek of Hank and we are, uh, Rebecca and I are going to shift him so you can see how we're going to walk around the, the, the east side of this habitat. We're going to lock him just temporarily in a safety bedroom next to Crystal. Rebecca is going to be able to get out and spread the food, spray some perfume for a little bit of enrichment, which hopefully he'll smell for you and you'll get to see how enrichment works today. And then Rebecca, Rebecca here is going to tell you a little bit about Hank. So first off, let me introduce Rebecca to you. She uh, joined our team in 2017. She's super enthusiastic. Her knowledge and passion for education quick, quickly landed her a full-time position as one of our lead keepers here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears. In 2018, Rebecca, since 2018, Rebecca has assisted with all medical procedures done here on site. She helps manage our gift shop and she oversees the daily med medications for the animals. She is a valuable asset to our team and not to mention she's a lot of fun and I think you're going to have a lot of fun today. So her and I are going to go shift Hank for you and then we'll be back and Rebecca's going to take it over from here. <laughs> so we are practicing the social distancing with our animals so we might not be able to get quite as close. Uh, Meg who's filming right now is wearing a mask and as you can see as we get close to the animals we are wearing a mask since we have learned that tigers could possibly be a little bit more susceptible to to the virus. We're just taking every precaution that we can right now. know the routine and they'll come up here to uh, come into the bedrooms for us. double check it before she enters the habitat. And so um, Rebecca will be going in and she's going to spread some food and put a little bit of sense for Hank. And then we're gonna go back around the other side and we're gonna let him right back out for you. <laughs> a little bit of enrichment. So Meg's gonna go around the other side so you can see a little better.
spraying some perfume as some extra enrichment for Hank. See how he likes kitty girl pink perfume. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Julie. Hi, Jason. Just want to say hi. Let us all know where you are. Rebecca's going to take over from here, and I'm going to try to read her your questions as you send them in. So don't be afraid to send in your questions. All right. Hi, everybody. Again, my name's Rebecca, and I want to introduce you to my favorite animal here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears. His name is Hank. Hank is so special to me and lions, tigers, and bears because he's just such a happy and loving tiger. Some of his favorite activities include having chuffing conversations with his keepers, which you probably heard as we were walking around. That, that sound that uh, is like a happy greeting for tigers. So he was greeting us. He was excited to see us this morning. Uh, Hank also really likes lazing around in and around his pool and rolling around in the grass being a goofball like he was this morning before we started filming of course. Uh, Hank and his mate Crystal who you might have also seen back there she's in a back habitat behind Hank. They were both rescued from a breeding facility in Ohio and when the laws changed that facility was shut down. Hank, Crystal, and two of our mountain lions were cared for here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears during that facility's investigation by the Ohio Department of Agriculture. And then in 2018, Lions, Tigers, and Bears was granted full legal custody, meaning that we are these animals forever home. That means we'll never breed them, never sell them, never trade them because we are a true accredited sanctuary. And Bobby has made it Lions, Tigers, and Bears mission to provide a safe haven to abused and abandoned exotic animals. So someone is asking how much he weighs and was he born here? No, Hank was not born here. Again, Lions, Tigers, and Bears rescued Hank from Ohio, a facility in Ohio. And last time we weighed him, he was just about 400 pounds. Someone's asking whether they chuff. Linda is asking whether they chuff or purr or meow. So big cats don't purr. Tigers are special in that they chuff. So again, that's like a... <laughs> sound so that uh, that's how they say hi. 
they can also make some other strange noises to talk to us um, as well as they do roar since they are a big cat. And here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears, we are accredited by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. So we do have the highest standards of care that we're requi required to either meet or exceed. And due to the Ohio facility only focusing on breeding, they did not keep proper medical records. So we don't really know exactly how old Hank is. We estimate he's probably 15 to 18 years old, which is very old for a tiger. And in captivity, tigers can live into their early 20s. So we have a Steven watching all the way from the UK and Mary Lou is asking what the spraying was for. She missed the explanation. The spraying for the perfume? Yep. Yeah, so the perfume was just some extra enrichment to hopefully he'll find those little spots, start rubbing all over them, um, kind of like your house cat would for catnip. So it's just something stimulating, something exciting for him to find in his habitat. And Susan is asking if all the tigers get along with each other. All the time, if all the tigers get along <laughs> with each other. So when we do our shifting into different habitats, which you saw a little bit earlier in some of our virtual visits, uh, a lot of times when the tigers are moved past each other, they do a lot of chuffing to say hi as they're passing. So for the most part, the tigers do really get along. Sometimes since the lions don't chuff, they don't speak quite the same language. So might be a little, uh, a little intense between the lions and tigers, but for the most part, the tigers do get along. Uh, but most of our tigers here are solitary, so they're um, kept by, their, by themselves, uh, with the exception of Mocha and Nola, who are two-year-old, can't say cubs anymore, juveniles, that we introduced when they were about seven months old. So Lynn is asking, do white tigers have vision problems? Ooh, yes they do. So I don't know if you saw, if you were able to get up close for that first shot of Hank. Uh, so with white tigers, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, later, kind of get into that, but they do have something that's called strabismus, which is a cross-eyed, which is linked to a recessive gene that makes them white. Michelle is saying Hank is beautiful in person, but the deformities are very noticeable from the inbreeding. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later. Just want to um, also kind of talk with you guys uh, with tigers. They can live into their early 20s in captivity. And again, Hank is 15 to 18 years old. So he is an old man. Uh, you can see he's got some issues kind of walking around a little bit. Uh -uh. <laughs> And he definitely walks like an old man tiger. And because of that, uh, he is on a few medications twice daily to make sure that he's not in any pain. And with only a $20 monthly donation, you guys can help make sure that Hank receives all of his necessary medications. So as you're watching this virtual visit today and happen to fall in love with Hank like I have and wish to support his medical expenses, and his care, you can go on our website at lionstigersandbears.org and learn more information about how to become a sponsor for Hank. And his decline in mobility probably isn't just due to him being an old man though, but before he was rescued, he was declawed on all four paws. And declawing an animal doesn't just remove that fingernail, but is an amputation up to that first joint which makes them more susceptible to arthritis and developing mobility issues. But another potential factor in Hank's decreased mobility is just due to the nature of him being a white tiger, since they are highly inbred. Trish is asking if white tigers are more susceptible to sunburn. More susceptible to sunburn. I'm not quite sure. Do you know that if answer? If their skin is exposed. If their skin is exposed. Like on the nose. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah so... No problem. We haven't had any problems. Yeah, I haven't had any problems with that here. And Kathy's commenting she brought her grandson for Christmas. Every year we have a Christmas party out here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears. And Santa's here for the kids, cocktails for the adults, a little bit of raffle items. It's just a fun open house to celebrate Christmas together. And hopefully you can all come to that this year. And hi to Shelly and Meg. 
and we do try really hard um, is to take the best possible care individualized animal care here so we've chosen not to take a hundred hundreds of animals but take what we can to provide a proper good quality of life not quantity of animals rescued so Michelle is asking that his paws are floppy and must hurt. <laughs> yes, they are really floppy again because he, he has been declawed before being rescued. And that is why he's on medications, just to make sure that uh, he isn't in any pain. But when uh, going back to when Hank first arrived, uh, he did need extensive dental work when, when he was first rescued, including five root canals, which were performed right here on site in our surgical room. It is such a great thing to have the ability to form, perform these necessary dentals and surgeries on property, since big cats are so susceptible to stress and anesthesia. And by doing the exams here, we are able to greatly reduce the amount of stress the animal is under. And Donna is asking if Hank, as well as the other animals, have particular favorite keepers or volunteers. Um, I mean, I always like to say that he does tend to chuff at me a lot when I walk up to say hi to him, but they, the animals do have their own, their own favorites. I like to think I'm the favorite for Hank, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> Sally's asking us to give kisses for Bakari. Done. Oh. Done. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. And we were able to neuter Hank here on site, on site too, um, and even perform a laparoscopic spay on Crystal so that they can never be bred again. During these procedures, we actually found a lot of evidence that Hank has sired a number of cubs, and Crystal has given birth to many tigers and exploited over and over so that the Ohio facility could profit off of their cubs. Because white tigers, they're very sought after in the exotic animal trade. A good looking white tiger can even be sold for about $50,000. Now these white tigers like Hank, they're not albino, but is a rare coloration from a recessive gene that occurs naturally within the Bengal subspecies. And for all those kids out there that might be watching, I've got an exciting challenge for all of you guys who are studying genetics and biology from home. This is a perfect example for practicing those Punnett squares. And with a Punnett square, you can calculate the probability of creating a white tiger. Again, this is an autosomal recessive trait, meaning that two copies of this gene must be present in order for the tiger to be white and not orange. So I'd love to see in the comments maybe some pictures of those Punnett squares. So make sure you make sure you post them. And I want to highly encourage parents and teachers to use this as a real life example to help teach teach their kids not only about using science in real life, but also teach them about these incredible animals. So hi to Craig who's watching and hi to Vivian. Now that maybe you guys have started making those pun and squares, you see the probability is actually fairly low. Now imagine the probability of those two tigers actually getting together in the wild. It occurs naturally about one in every 10,000 births in the wild, and there are only a little over 3,000 tigers in general out in the wild. So we probably will never see another wild white tiger. So Megan is see, saying that uh, she can barely see him. So we try, we've tried everything, putting him in a smaller area for you all to see, but then people complain. And now we have him in a little medium sized area so you can see, but I guarantee you after he eats the food, he'll probably find a little interest in us and come down. <laughs> right now he's still searching out his breakfast. Can I share my videos from my visit somehow? <laughs> Seems like he picked a spot underneath some logs to get some shade. <laughs> so maybe we could walk up there and get a closer look. <laughs> Today. Now he's going to get too close. We won't be able to get him. <laughs> Hi, Hank. <laughs> so, again, you might have heard the chuffing. That's Hank saying hi to us. So 
Some mature white tigers actually have been found in the wild, but unfortunately they've fallen victim to trophy hunters, habitat loss, and fragmentation, just like the orange coloration. And since the white tigers are so rare, but highly valuable, what has happened in the exotic pet trade is that they found they can have a smaller inventory of tigers and increase the odds of getting a white tiger if they are inbred. Now this inbreeding comes with a plethora of negative consequences, such as pressed palates, stillbirths, deformed spines, limbs, organs, all for people's greed. And white tigers, they're so inbred that almost all white tigers in captivity can be traced back to one male tiger in the 1950s. Crystal is next door. Donna's asking if Crystal's next door. She's sitting over there watching us. <laughs> a lot of times in the breeding process, uh, a lot of the deformed cubs might just be discarded immediately and then the cubs are pulled right away so that the female can go back to being bred quicker, which is probably what happened with, with Crystal and Hank. Their cubs were just automatically pulled. So someone is asking, I'm going to answer this one. Kathy Anderson is asking if we've ever done a rescue from the Tiger King facility. Uh, yesterday we tried to feature the Tiger King. The sound was a little bit bad because it was raining. And I have worked, I have known Joe since the 1990s and he is never going to change. And we chose not to take any animals from that facility because what would happen is it would enable him space to breed and have more. So one of the things we have to do when we're rescuing is we have to be very careful that we don't enable the photo op people or the breeders to have more space to breed more animals. So no, we chose not to take any animals from Joe's facility and for that reason. And a lot of places that breed the white tigers, they actually say sometimes that they're helping conservation, but even the AZA or the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, which is the highest accreditation for zoos, don't recommend breeding white tigers because they are so inbred. And remember, white tigers are not even their own subspecies, but a rare color variation within the Bengal tigers. So make sure that whenever you're searching for an organization to support, Make sure to keep this in mind and choose an accredited facility. See who that facility has to answer to in terms of their standards, of how they build their habitats, their veterinary care, and everyday animal care. And make sure that you know the stories of the animals and how they were obtained, what happens to them after they pass. And make sure that you're taking this time as we're all needing to stay at home to do the research. You can learn more about lions, tigers, and bears from our website and even click on our accreditations to read the standards that we have to uphold. So Jackie from Vegas is asking if we're going to do these live videos next week. And we are Wednesday through Saturday, 1030 uh, on Facebook. And then we post them again on Instagram around noon. And we're not allowed right now or we wouldn't want to actually during this pandemic to have visitors. So we're trying to bring the animals to you. And one of the ways that we raise funds for these animals is by the educational visits where you can come out and bring your kids out. And so it's, you know, hard to keep the money out. So we've launched our Help Us Hang In There campaign. And you can get to that by texting to 71777LTB or going right on our website, www.lionstigersandbears.org. We are the Lions, Tigers, and Bears in Alpine, California by San Diego. And it's a $20 challenge, so if you can donate $20 or more, it really does help us to help these animals. And it also um, is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, so you can launch your own fundraiser. It's super simple. Just get on our website and push Become a Fundraiser, something fun you could do with your kids or your family to help us to help the animals. He does have a beautiful face, doesn't he? So Michelle Vincent is asking what happens to the deformed cubs? Deformed cubs are either just euthanized right away um, or discarded or just sold maybe even to a canned hunt ranch so that they can continue breeding, making that female go into estrus 
quicker so that they can continue to profit. Asking about his big paws. <laughs> Someone's asking about the being able to feed the tigers. Oh yeah, so on our normal visits, we do uh, have an opportunity to feed with a keeper. So you can feed with, of course, a four foot long fork. Uh, feeding the tigers through a chain link fence with that four foot long fork on our regular visits, uh, Monday, uh, Wednesdays through Saturdays. But then we do have behind the scenes visits for either bears, cats, or bears and cats, that you'll be able to feed all of the animals and hear their stories, of course, again, with that four foot long fork. So saying hi to someone's mom, Heather's mom, Terry Anderson, and also to Michelle, who was watching our work in the Philippines. We did go to the Philippines trying to help Laika the lioness. We haven't given up on that project yet. All of the authorities have given us the right to take the animal out back to the United States or help the animal there, but the actual facility needs to make that decision and they're not willing to quite do that yet. We're still working on that one. Michelle was lucky enough to feed Maverick when she was here. Donna says he's a charmer, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, such, such a charmer with all of his chuffing that, again, if you guys come out on visits, once we're open to the public, you guys can even chuff at Hank and he might chuff back at you. It's very special. Becky's asking if you can view previous live streams and you can, you can just go on our website, click on the Facebook and it'll take you to our Facebook page or go right to our Facebook page and just we uh, most days started with a picture of the lions, tigers, and bears logo or the help us hang in their campaign photo or actual picture of the animal's face. I think today was the first day we didn't have the sign, the first thing. So if you just go back and look for the campaign or the logo, you'll find the streams. Maybe smelling some of that perfume and getting excited. We, uh, Vicky's, uh, sorry. Viola is asking if Hank has a favorite keeper. <laughs> we think it's Rebecca. <laughs> I like to think it's me. <laughs> he always tends to show off and again, he loves having chuffing conversations with keepers and volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that little cut on his nose up from doing exactly what he's doing right now because he wants to love on you <laughs> but again we are a no contact facility so any the only time that we would ever have hands on these animals is for a medical reason just ask the same question about his nose <laughs> Yeah, he likes to rub up on the fence and just like your your domestic house cats at home like to rub up on your leg. Obviously, Hank is not going to rub up on any of our legs because we're no contact, but he does rub up on the fence and sometimes gets a little bit more scratches on his face because of that, because of all of his love. Hi, Wendy. Well, does anyone have any more questions about Hank today or about lions, tigers, and bears? Are most white tigers' eyes blue? They've got a blue and green for the most part in their eyes. 
they do still have some pigment um, again being a white tiger um, not being albino so they do have some pigments whereas being albino they would have a complete lack of any kind of pigment so Julie is asking, do we ever scratch him with a long tool or some type? <laughs> <laughs> it's normally just the fence that he's coming up and scratching right next to. He scratches himself for us right up on the fence. <laughs> Sarah's asking, were Hank and Crystal ever in the same enclosure? They could have been in the same enclosure in Ohio, but no, we have not put Hank and Crystal in the same habitat here. Especially since when they first arrived, they were still both intact. And then, of course, we spayed and neutered them. But with Hank's mobility not being 100%, we just want to make sure that he's safe. So we'll probably just continue keeping them in habitats right next to each other. Hi, Mike. I have to do it with some semi-feral kitties. Do what? Introduce them, maybe? Hi, Susan. <laughs> If you see what Hank's doing right now with his tongue sticking out, kind of making a, a stinky face, it, that's called the Fleming response that cats do when they sm want to smell something really good. So he might be smelling the perfume that I put around. Helps them take in the air a little bit better and smell better. Happy Easter to you too, Cassie. Is that Lipoma on his left elbow? Um, his elbow is a little bit thicker, which is probably what you're seeing um, due to a lot of arthritis. And uh, again, the fact that he is a white tiger and was um, probably very inbred, he does have a lot of mobility issues because of all that. Charlotte is asking if they're happier in this kind of weather or when it's warmer. Mike loves our videos. <laughs> I mean, Hank seems to be happy in any kind of weather. Even when it's raining, he's out and about, rolling around in the mud. He's really smelling that perfume now on the ball that I put. That's a little boomer ball, so it's a very thick plastic. Uh, so he can really uh, pick it up and kind of crush it around. Oh, roll around with it. It has to be a lot tougher than your regular cat and dog toys so cassie is asking um how old he is so we don't really know exactly how old <laughs> exactly how old hank is he's probably 15 to 18 years old and again cats in captivity can live into their early 20s so he is definitely an old man normally out in the wild uh, life expectancy is going to be about half that and Michelle is asking if she can order online from our gift shop. Yes, please do. Um, if you go on our website, lionstigersandbears.org, and click on shop, we do have a number of different items that you can shop. Uh, we've got some hats, T-shirts, magnets, some sippy cups. So Hank is really loving that enrichment. <laughs> the perfume makes the boomer ball a little extra exciting. You might fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you who can, we ask you to help us to hang in there by going to our Hang In There campaign. It's on the homepage of our website. It is a $20 challenge asking if you can donate $20 or more. You can easily text 71777 and text LTB to 71777. It'll take you directly to the campaign. And I hope you enjoyed meeting Hank today. We sure enjoyed hanging out with them. 
and uh, we hope that you'll come back and see us next week, Wednesday through Saturday, 1030, 1030 live on the Facebook, and then we repost on the Instagram at, at noon. Hope everybody's having a great day. Happy Easter. God bless you, and we love you all. Say bye, Hank. Bye.